My name is Dr. Rush and this is Mean Variance Portfolio Optimization in Excel. In this example you will need the analysis and solver add-ins installed. You should already have a time series of excess returns and the covariance matrix calculated from this data. Refer to my earlier videos if you need help. Start by calculating the average excess return for each asset. While we should use a forward-looking estimate of each asset's risk premium, this example will use the historic average risk premium on each asset to form our expectations. Does each expectation look reasonable for the frequency of returns and asset class? If not, there is a data problem, or we may need a bigger sample. Fill in the portfolio weights with some arbitrary values. This is necessary to give the solver a place to start and to check whether our formulas are being evaluated correctly. Calculate the absolute value of the portfolio weights. This will be used as a leverage constraint to ensure that our weights do not go to positive or negative infinity. Calculate the sum of the weights. This will be constrained to 100% to ensure that we are fully invested. Matrices have dimensions that are defined by the number of rows and columns. Our vector of excess return expectations has one row and ten columns. The weight vector has the same dimensions. To perform matrix multiplication, the inner dimensions need to match. Note I am not trying to teach linear algebra in this assignment, so I'll use the simplest explanation for these operations. The transpose function is used to change a vertical vector to a horizontal vector and vice versa. Transposing the excess return vector would change the dimensions from 1 by 10 to 10 by 1. The data would then be arranged vertically. The portfolio excess return is weight transpose multiplied by the excess return vector. That means weights should be 1 by 10 and excess returns should be 10 by 1. The answer will be the outer dimensions. In this case, it is 1 by 1, which makes sense since the answer represents the portfolio excess return. Our weight vector is already transposed, so we do not need to do that operation again. The excess return vector is also transposed, so we need to transpose it again to match the formula. The mmult function performs matrix multiplication on two compatible matrices. In matrix multiplication, the order of the matrices matters. Select the weight vector as the first argument and transpose the excess return vector to use as the second argument. Type Control shift enter to make Excel evaluate the formula as a matrix operation. This will add braces around the formula you will not get the same answer if you manually add the braces. Next, we need to calculate portfolio variance. The formula for portfolio variance is weight transpose multiplied by the covariance matrix multiplied by the weight vector. The covariance matrix is always square and has the same dimensions as the number of risky assets. In this case, the covariance matrix is 10 by 10. Our weight vector is already transposed, so it has dimensions of 1 by 10. The final weight vector needs to be 10 by 1 in order for the answer to have dimension of 1 by 1. In this example, we will need to transpose the final weight vector to have the proper dimensions. We will use nested mmult functions to multiply the three matrices. Start with the weight vector. Next is the covariance matrix. Close the inner mmult function, which becomes the first argument for the outer mmult function. The second argument is the weight vector arranged vertically. Type Control Shift Enter to evaluate the formula. The portfolio variance has squared returned units, which is difficult to interpret, so we typically format it as a decimal. Take the square root of the variance to find the portfolio standard deviation which does have return units and should be formatted as a percentage. Since we are already using excess returns, the Sharpe ratio becomes portfolio risk premium 
divided by the portfolio standard deviation. Both numerator and denominator have return units, so the Sharpe ratio has no units and should be formatted as a decimal. We will annualize the portfolio excess return, standard deviation, and Sharpe ratio. Use the effective annual rate calculation to find the annual excess return. This will appear high because it does not take return volatility into account when compounding. You may add the most recent annualized risk-free rate if you want to calculate the total return. The standard deviation is multiplied by the square root of time. In this example, the monthly standard deviation is multiplied by the square root of 12. The annual Sharpe ratio is the excess return divided by the annual standard deviation. Now we are ready to optimize the portfolio. Open Solver and select the monthly Sharpe Ratio as our objective to maximize. While we do not have control over asset returns, we do control the weights within our portfolio. The weights are our variable cells. Next, we need some constraints. The first constraint is that the sum of the weights should equal 1. The second constraint is a leverage constraint which could be anything greater than 1 and less than infinity. Less leverage is more realistic, so I will set 2 as my constraint. Finally, we need to decide whether we want a long-only portfolio or a long-short portfolio. The long-only portfolio will need non-negative weights, while a long-short portfolio will allow for negative weights. This example uses a long-short portfolio. The solver is not guaranteed to give the global maximum Sharpe ratio. Try some different starting weights to make sure that the solver did not get stuck at a local maximum. This problem is magnified as we add more assets to the portfolio. Your portfolio should now be maximized. You can improve this model by producing better forward-looking estimates of excess returns and by modeling the expected covariance matrix but both are beyond the scope of this exercise.